All right, let's fire this thing up. This is not my day. Now, if you take a look at the length, the newer one is far longer than the older one. What I have to do is lob this and take that small groove and install it there, and that'll give me my shorter length. It's gonna use a small hammer and chisel and bust these two apart. <laughs> it on the lathe. One last thing that we have to do is remove this shaft from this housing. This stuff is super hard. I started off with using this small carbide bit to get the approximate width and depth of it all. Now we're gonna take this bit here, we'll put it in the building tool area, and we're gonna square this guy off. We have our new groove cut in there. Now we can put this thing back together. business that we have to do is actually create a spacer in between the housing and the starter housing and all I'm gonna do is actually use this old housing and trim that off and machine a groove in on this side for this to slide in
that'll pass and we should uh, curve it. Then every cat starter, one short guy right where the solenoid goes. All right, there we have it. We have ourselves a modified starter for 1948 dozer. That's what I need there is the two inches from the actual gear on the engine and this little guy will keep on i've got lots of space in there for now in a couple days here when it warms up i'll put this thing on and show you the results here in a couple seconds yeah let's see if she works so we've got the new starter in the dozer let's try and fire this thing up I heat up these fuel lines try and get that diesel warmed up a little bit decompression a little squirt of ether throttle up cross my finger <laughs> Super excited I got this old 3T dozer running. That starter Jimmy rig system I did worked out absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to wait until springtime to bring this thing to the shop, give it a hot water pressure wash, sandblast it, and give it a paint job. There's a couple few little leaks and some track stuff I need to do to it, but super cool. So my next winter project is to repair the skid steer here. Uh, I've got to change the battery out and a bunch of battery cables. I'll keep the area clean especially with the hill. We've got a super steep hill. I've crashed on the thing like two or three times. Here's the picture right here. Spread all about ether in it. This thing does not have glow plugs, so it doesn't start too well in the winter. Well, I finally got this thing running. So for the skid steer, we got to build a positive battery cable. I'm going to dab both ends in some flux, put it in the terminals. And then we'll put the terminal in the device. So you can purchase these small soldering plugs. It's easy to just slide them in, heat them up, and it's the perfect amount of solder. But I'm just going to go the old fashioned way. Not, just simply slide your cable in, let it cool, fill it out, the uh, vice will actually act as a heat sink. Now that we have the end soldered, I'm just going to take a hammer and a chisel and just do a little bit of a crimp in there. They actually make tools that do this, but I currently don't own one of them. So with the end soldered and crimped, we're gonna slide some heat shrink over top of it. So you can see it's a nice tight seal around the cable. In the future, we won't have to worry about corrosion between the cable and the terminal. All right, we got a new 31C series batteries with a new positive cable and Two ground cables, one going to the engine and the other going to the chassis. While this thing's in the shop, I'm actually going to drain the old diesel out. It might be summer diesel in it and might be causing some of the problems for starting. And I also want to do a fuel filter change and put an electric fuel pump in. So this is a little mechanics trick. We'll see if we can do this with one hand. Once the bag is on there, you just get absolutely no spillage. Uh, I bypassed that and actually installed one of the, these electric fuel pumps. You can purchase them from Amazon, they're like 25 bucks. Put these things in all my pumps, uh, excavators, machines, all these old style lift pumps seem to always fail on me. 
course I do run older equipment, so that's probably the reason why. So one last thing I want to check on this is the condition of this hydraulic fluid. I have a feeling that it's actually contaminated with water and that's what's causing the slow start. It's going to use my siphon hose here and put it into this adult juice container. So there's that hydraulic fluid. That is pretty dirty. I don't even know what in the heck is in. I changed my filters lots, but that is nasty. So I changed out about 15 gallons of that hydraulic fluid. Guarantee you that hydraulic fluid was starting that slow start. Once it got so cold out, it turned into molasses and that engine would not be able to turn that pump system over. So at least I figured it out and this thing should be good to go. All right, all these modifications are done. Cross my fingers, see how quick this thing starts up. It used to drag on quite a bit before I actually fired, whether it was warm or cold. So let's see. My first episode of my winter vlog. I won't have too many of these this winter. I'm gonna have a lot of good videos this summer of us mining. We've got three or four different sites to open up. One of them is gonna be Dan Hurd's site on the Quinell River. Another one is gonna be a very historical creek that we're doing exploration on, and it is known for insane amounts of gold. Unfortunately, there's no gold in this video, but that's what future videos are for. So if you like the video and like my previous videos, please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy my future ones too.